Hi there, it's Harry Kellum Nails from thethoughtgym.com and welcome to today's yoga class which is going to be a midday de-stress flow. So it's that time of day where you feel like you need to move your body a bit, maybe you've been sat at your desk a little while and you just need to dust off the cobwebs uh, so you're ready for the afternoon. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, quick flow, 20-30 minutes just to get the body moving. We're going to start in our tabletop position. I often like to start in this position just to warm up the spine. Inhaling, gazing forward, dipping the belly down, tilting the tailbone back, rotating the elbow creases forward. Exhale as you round the spine, push away the floor and find that kind of cobra hood uh, at the top of the spine, so that rounding at the top of the spine. Inhale brings the gaze forward, navel comes down towards the mat, Exhale, gaze towards the navel as you push the floor away around the back. So a few more times, just warming up the spine. Maybe if you're doing this in the morning, you've just woken up, but if you're doing it in midday, like I am, maybe you've been sitting a while, maybe you want to move a little bit, dip into the shoulder blades a little bit, a little bit of freedom here. Start to move around the knees, bringing the hips back, maybe rotating over the wrists, possibly changing directions. Really just what you want to do here uh, to start making things move a little bit. Hands slightly in front of you, tucking the toes, elevating the knees just an inch off the ground here, just create a little bit of heat in the body here. Uh, before we come into down and face the dog, we're going to bring our chest down towards our thighs as we bring our head towards um, the thighs or the floor or our ears in between our elbow creases and then maybe you need to adjust your feet slightly as you start to extend the legs maybe not fully straight slight bend still slight pigeon toe hands about shoulder width apart index finger facing forward heels and feet about shoulder width apart as well or about just wider than hip width and then maybe pedaling through the feet here Yeah. From here, inhale the right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, stepping that right leg between the hands, placing it down, lowering the back knee towards the ground, flattening the back foot, inhale, reaching the arms up to the sky, drawing the hips forward, right hip back, left hip forward slightly. Exhale, framing the hands. From here, inhale, right hand up towards the sky, Taking a twist here. Excellent. As you release that hand inside of the right foot, lining up the arm and the leg. Inhale, left hand up, twisting the other way here. Okay, so slightly different, maybe slightly wobbly. Coming back down here. From here, framing the front foot and extending the leg. As you bring the right hip back, lift the right toes, finding your chest moving towards the thigh, or the extended thigh, or extended leg out in front of you. Good. Coming back, lifting the back knee, stepping back, downward facing dog. Okay. Option here is to stay down the dog or come to your knees and take a child's pose. Or we're going to roll through to high plank, lower down to the knees, draw the chest down into a half chatter and keep elbows over the wrist if you can. Inhale, chest forward, shoulder blades down the back body, gazing forward slightly into our cobra. Tuck in the chin, round and back, bending into the knees, maybe coming towards your child's pose momentarily before tucking the toes and coming into downward facing dog. Yeah, from here, inhale, left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Excellent, you bring the knee to the chest and step the foot between the hands. Lowering the back knee towards the ground, flattening the back foot. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. So draw that left hip back, that right hip forward. Bend into that front knee. Gaze up towards the hands if you can. Hands could be together even if you wish, but if they are together, push the hands 
against each other to activate the side body, or you can just have them, say, ball width apart. From here, framing the front foot, okay, inhale, left hand reaches towards the sky, easy twist here, looking up towards the left hand if you can, if not, just look anywhere that's comfortable for the neck, lowering the hand inside of that left foot, lining up the leg and the arm, inhale, right arm twists, before lowering it back down, framing the front foot, extending that left leg, raising the left toes, bringing the chest down towards the thigh, thinking about drawing that left hip back, that right hip forward, maybe pulling the foot towards the shin a little bit more, and folding down. Hmm, breathe in here. Bending back into that front knee, lifting the back knee. Stepping back, downward facing dog. Again, staying downward dog, take a child's pose. Or roll through to high plank, lower to the knees once more. Shift the weight of the chest forward as you bend into the elbows, bringing the chest down, drawing the chest forward. Shoulder blades down the body, maybe a slightly higher cobra than before, before tucking the chin, rolling back, temporarily coming into a child's pose, and then tucking the toes, finding a way, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky, three legged dog. Exhale, bring that knee towards the chest, stepping, looking beyond your hands, stepping that right leg through. This time you can bring the knee down like before, or we stay with it up. Inhale, coming up into our crescent lunge. So right knee is over the ankle, drawing the arms up. Really think about keeping that hip square, drawing that right hip back, that left hip forwards, and looking up towards your hands. Breathe in here. Good. Lowering the hands, framing the front foot, coming into this long lunge. Inhale, right hand up, easy twist. Again, think about drawing that right hip back, left hip forwards, looking up towards the hand if your neck allows. Lowering the right hand inside of the right foot, lower the back heel, and inhale, left arm up towards the sky. Okay, as best you can, opening up here. Lowering back down, coming into that long lunge. Taking a super wide pyramid pose here, so we can start to extend that right leg. Lowering the back heel slightly, leaning forward over that front leg, bringing the right foot and, uh, foot and toes towards the shin, drawing the right hip back, the left hip forward. Okay, so very kind of long variation on the standard pyramid pose. Coming back into our long lunge. Stepping back into our high plank, downward facing dog. Again, staying down dog or child's pose, or the roll through to high plank. Either come onto the knees, or this time full chaturanga, coming down in that push-up position. So keep the wrists underneath the, uh, underneath the elbows here. Coming up into a upward dog with your thighs floating off the ground, just the tops of the feet looking to touch the ground and tucking the toe, uh, tucking the chin rather, rolling back vertebra by vertebra, coming into downward facing dog once more. Good, inhaling left leg up towards the sky, three legged dog. Stepping that left leg in between the hands here. Okay, looking beyond your hands here. Inhale, arms up, coming into our crescent lunge. So think about tucking the pelvis under here, squaring the hips, keeping the left knee over the left ankle, tracking over that second big toe. I know a lot to think about here. Activating the arms, not pinching up at the neck, but drawing the shoulder blades down the body as you look up. Again, you can press the hands against each other, activate the side body here as well. From here, lowering down towards the ground. Left hand reaches skywards. Easy twist, drawing that left hip back. Looking up towards the hand if your neck allows it. 
otherwise wherever is comfortable. Releasing side of the left foot, lowering the right heel. Inhale, right hand up to the sky. Good. Releasing back down, framing the front foot, unplugging the back heel. Extend the front leg, sink into that back heel. Bring the left foot towards the left shin. Draw the hips parallel, fold the chest towards the thigh, taking this extended, augmented pyramid pose before coming into our long lunge once more, placing the hands down, stepping back, high plank, downward dog, resting here, child pose, rolling through to high plank, taking it down to that chaturanga. Inhaling into that upward dog, drawing the chest open, shoulder blades down the back body, gazing forwards. Tucking the chin round and through the spine, coming into downward facing dog. Let's take three deep long breaths in downward dog here. So inhaling through the nose into the belly. Exhale through the nose or the mouth, your choice. You can sigh it out. Two. And then last one, inhaling. Placing the knees on the ground, sinking back onto the heels here, extend the arms out in front of you, start to sink into child's pose, taking a moment here, rest, recover, recompose your thoughts. From child's pose, Making your way back into downward facing dog. Bending your knees, looking between your hands, and either step, float, fly to the front of the mat, bringing the feet together. Keeping the hands touching the ground, engaged with the ground, bending the knees as much as you need to allow that to happen. Keep that bottom in that imaginary stool or seat. And draw the chest up, coming into our chair pose or fierce pose. So big toes together. Bottom sitting down, knees are not beyond the toes, arms are where they're comfortable, maybe up here, drawing that chest open, tucking the pelvis under, sitting here, okay? We're gonna be here for long, but we're gonna sit here, we're gonna activate the thighs, maybe starting to burn a little bit as we sit in our comfortable seat. From here, five, four, three, two, and one, and standing up. Coming into Tadasana, mountain pose at the front of your mat, gazing forward, okay? Gonna try that a couple more times, but with a, a bit of a twist here as well. So again, big toes touching, heels maybe about an inch apart. Um, if it hurts your legs or knees back to do that, try not sinking down as much, and also keeping your feet a little bit further apart. That will usually help, as well as if it's pinching your neck, maybe don't bring the arms up, but bring the arms further down or in front. We're not gonna keep them up anyway very long. Again, sweep the arms down so you can touch the floor, sit into your chair, arms up, okay? Hands come into prayer position. This time left elbow is gonna hook outside of the right knee, or if not, you're gonna place one hand on the back, one hand on the knee, and twist this way. If you can bring yourself into prayer position, thumb is at the sternum, check the left knee is not tracking in front of the right knee, so just look down and just have a look at what's going on there. And then press the hands together, thumbs in the center of your sternum, twisting and looking over your right elbow. Sink in a little bit lower. Good. Inhale, come up. Okay, if you need to take a break and you stand, otherwise if you can keep seated, keep seated bringing the hands into prayer position, and then same thing, left side, so right elbow hooks, left knee. Just check that the right knee is not going too much further in front of the left, ideally they should be level. Thumbs in front of the center of the sternum, looking over the left elbow. Should feel a bit of heat in the body right now. Inhale, coming up into our chair, and exhale as we come up into Tadasana and continue to swan dive all the way down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, hands to shins or thighs. 
Exhale as you place the hands down, set the right leg, followed by the left leg coming into high plank. Either straight away it's down the dog, or come through that vinyasa flow. Inhale, upward dog, and rolling back into downward facing dog. From here, roll through to high plank, coming into our side plank. So side plank option is to just stack the right leg over the, the left, come onto the left arm, make sure the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist are in alignment, and raise the right hand. If that's too much, bring the left knee down maybe, instead, and support yourself that way, even swivel the foot out to have more stability, or you want something in between, bring the right foot halfway, give you that option. Okay, that's, uh, that's your options. Of course you can come onto the elbow as well, and stay in here, and if you want a little bit more, you can dip the hips down, and come back up, and dip, and come back up. Okay, one more time, dip, and come back up. Good, from here, coming back into high plank. Okay, options come straight into downward dog, or coming into our chaturanga, our upward dog, or cobra, and rolling back into our downward facing dog. Okay, same thing other side, so we're gonna roll through to high plank, come onto the outer edge of that right foot, stack the left, hip, uh, left foot over, coming up, making sure the wrist is under the shoulder, staying here, or taking one of the options with the knee, the foot out, that's also a good option, or the left foot halfway, whatever works for you. And again, we're gonna dip the hips down if you want, a bit more challenge, and up. Ooh, dip, and up, and dip, and up. And back into our high plank, low plank chaturanga, up with double cobra, and rolling back down with dog. You can always miss out those, come straight into down with dog or child's pose, whatever you wish. From here, we're gonna step the right foot outside of the right hand, left outside of the left, and make our way into whatever comfortable yogi squat we can do. I'm not gonna come down too far, but you can come down further. Toes are off the mat generally, heels are on the mat, <coughs> spine is straight, knees are splayed open with support from the elbows, and again, coming into prayer position, bringing the uh, fingers or the thumb into the center of the sternum here, holding this position. Okay. And then from here, we're gonna stand up slowly, Coming onto our tippy toes, lifting the gaze to follow the hands which reach towards the sky. Coming back down, as the hands come down, the heels come down, the knees start to bend, spine stays straight as much as you can. We come back into our position here. From here we're gonna place the hands back down and either step back or jump back into high plank, low plank, Inhale, upward dog, roll back into downward facing dog. Taking a couple of breaths here. Inhaling, and exhale. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step that through into our long lunge. From here, we're gonna float into warrior three, any arm choice that you wish. So. Float that back leg off, bring in the hips level, arms forward, aeroplane arms, or arms behind, arms in prayer, arms behind the back, <coughs> whatever is feeling it for you right now. Hold in here for three, for two, squeezing the left thigh for one, coming back down into that long lunge, and then stepping back into downward facing dog. Okay, optional flow and vinyasa, roll through, down, upward dog, and downward facing dog. Left leg, inhale up, exhale, stepping it through. 
floating through into warrior three. Again, squeezing that right thigh, bringing that right foot up a little bit, holding it here, any arm position for three, for two, for one. Bending into that front knee, coming back down, high plank, down with facing dog. Again, rolling vinyasa, roll through and down, and inhale up and tuck the chin and back. Downward facing dog. And then child's pose. This time maybe taking the knees wide, bringing the heels together and trying a variation on what you normally might do. Sinking down, finding your way into a wide kneed child's pose. From our wide knee child's pose, rolling the spine up, Coming back into downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step that right leg outside of the right hand. Lower the left knee towards the ground. Staying here if we want, adjusting the left knee to come back a little bit to find a bit more uh, of a stretch in the left hip area. Staying here or lowering the outside forearm to the ground. If you've got space, you can lower the inside forearm to the ground here as well. Taking our lizard pose, some people call it blaster or something else I think. Um, all these poses, lots of different English names, all made up names, of course. Everything is kind of made up. Yeah, anyway, um, you can keep the back knee down or you can tuck the toes and lift the knee up and rock forwards and back because we're not going to be here forever. Just uh, find whatever works for you in this pose. If it's too much, just come up onto the hands, bring a block underneath you if you've got blocks, um, it's all good. Or anything like a towel, a game of some sort, those old board games, if anyone's still got board games at home. Good. Hands back, back knee lifted, stepping back, and downward facing dog, okay? I'm not going to do a vinyasa here, we're going to go straight into the other side, so left leg up towards the sky and stepping back into that long lunge, left foot outside of left hand, lowering the back knee. We're just um, <clears throat> opening up and doing a bit of a stretch now, so we don't need to overdo the vinyasas anymore, unless you want to, bringing the forearms down again if that worked for you, lifting the back knee again if that worked for you finding what works, maybe adjusting that back knee further back, further forwards. I'm keeping my foot straight at the moment, but you can turn it out, you can come onto the edge. Um, your practice, your choice, but for today, I'm, I'm preferring just to keep things simple, straight, keep it there. Find the sensation that I'm looking for in this variation of it. Good. I can definitely feel hot for myself right now. Felt the heat building. And then we're going to come back onto my hands and step back into downward facing dog. Good. And then from here, come into a seated position in any way that you want. Good. Bending the knees. From here we're going to start uh, getting into this from the seated position. We're going to bring the right ankle over the left knee. Okay, you may need to scoot up a little bit. Adjust yourself here and we're going to try with keeping our hands propped behind us here. Open up that right knee away, flexing that right foot and then bringing, just adjusting where we are on our bottom, whether we come close towards the left foot or away. And what that feels like and does to our right glute, if anything, right? Think about maybe adjusting where along that right leg you're crossing the knee. Does that change things if you come further across but still keep it in that parallel position versus bringing it and the heel? So I want you to experiment on this one, okay? And then we're gonna come down. So just feel what's going on coming forwards, Coming back, chest up, 
maybe coming onto the fingertips even, really seeing what, what does that do. Okay. Then we're gonna, if you want, you can stay where you are, you can come onto your back, thread the hands through, wrapping the thigh, bringing the right elbow onto that right thigh, pushing it away, and getting a slightly different sensation here maybe. Um, trying to sink those hips back to the floor, maybe bringing the chest or the nose towards the, the ankle. Um, this left leg can, can be straight, some people like to have it straight. It can just be floating, or it can be hanging and bending. Again, your choice, your, your body, your practice, but just have a sense of what's going on here. Good. And then keep in the cross of the ankles here. Bring the, um, so exactly where we are, but we're gonna bring both knees over to the floor here. So the ankle is still hooked, and we'll take an easy twist, extend the left arm away, this right hand can either come onto the thigh, the right thigh, and help shepherd the, the pose down towards the ground, or you can have it over your head as if it's trailing the, uh, the left hand, so it's, uh, it's like it's blowing in the wind, as it were. Good. And then as we come over and back into our starting position, fully cross the knee over and bring the hips or the knees over to the left. This time placing the left hand on those knees and the right hand out away from you. Okay, so a couple of easy twists there coming out of our pigeon or our seated pigeon pose variation. Yeah, coming back to centre, unraveling everything. Separating the feet to mat width apart, knocking the knees together and just Rocking the knees from side to side, windscreen wipering them like all windscreen wipers of a car. Doesn't have to be all the way down to the floor, just to get some mobility in the spine. Good, then we're going to come back up. Same thing on the other side, so we're going to maybe adjust where we want to be. Again, we're, at the moment we're trying to open up this left knee just through willpower alone, so we're not using anything else. Um, then we're going to maybe start adjusting how close to our heel is that left glute gonna go, or the right glute, sorry. And we flex that left foot, maybe we come close, maybe we come onto our fingertips. And again, you can of course adjust how far along the leg, your left leg crosses the right knee, and see what does that do? Does that bring the knee in more, or does it keep it out? If you're out here, do you feel it differently? I feel it a lot in this left glute. Um, come up onto your fingertips if you wish. You can feel just what's going on here. It feels quite nice, but it does feel reasonably intense. You want it kind of like a six, seven out of 10 intensity, not really a nine or 10. And then we're gonna roll back down, wrap the thigh. Use that left elbow to pull the left thigh away. Come back to lying position. So we're trying to bring that um, left heel towards us. And we may want to bring our knee and our nose together a little bit, or our, or our ankle on our nose, our right knee and our nose, or our left ankle on our nose. Whilst at the same time trying to draw the hips back down towards the mat. Because they're going to lift up as we pull. Of course that's going to happen. But the intention, even though you're pulling that direction, is that the hips are pulling in the other direction and you're bringing knee to nose, as it were. And then we're gonna come back. And then release both knees over to the left, so keeping the, the foot hooked. Right hand extends away, left hand either onto the thigh or in that kind of blow in the wind position as it reaches over the head, trailing the right hand. Yeah, as we come back up, crossing the knees and bringing the right hand onto that left thigh, left arm away, taking a spinal twist here, and gazes towards the left hand, or eyes closed, coming back to centre, and again separating the 
feet mat width apart, windscreen wipering from side to side a few times. Yeah, keeping the left knee bent, coming into half happy baby on the right side, so bringing the right, oh, my aura ring here, let's move that to one side, um, bringing that sole of that right foot to the sky, pulling the right knee down, keeping that left knee bent, or if you're comfortable there, you can start to extend that left leg and see what that does. Maybe placing the hand on the left thigh, Remembering to breathe out any tension. Good. Re-bend that left knee and bring that right foot back down. And again, same thing other side. So we take happy baby. So grab the outside edge of that right foot, the left foot, pulling that left knee down towards the floor. Okay, either staying here or getting a, a nice strong position here, nice open position, and then you can start to experiment with extending the right leg straight. Keeping the spine on the ground here. Good. Bringing that right knee back into a bent position and then bringing the left foot down. Okay, then we're going to take full happy baby here. So bringing both soles of the feet to the sky, grabbing hold of the outside edges of both feet, pulling those knees down, drawing the shoulder blades down the back body. Maybe you can rock from left to right, forward and backwards if you wish, or you can just stay here and keeping the spine flat and neutral. Uh, again, I like to have a, a little bit of choice in each person's practice. I'm just guiding you through some ideas. Yeah. And then from here, we're going to come into Bacassola. So we're going to bring our soles of our feet together and lower them down towards the ground and allow the knees to open wherever gravity will take them. Taking a moment here. And actually we're gonna close our practice here. If you wanna take a full Shavasana with the legs extended, by all means do so. And I'm gonna take um, you know, a semi Shavasana in this Bakasana leg position. So soles of my feet are gonna to be together, my knees are apart. A hand on my chest and a hand on my belly. Allow myself to breathe in through the nose and into the belly. So you want to focus on the, the hand on your chest staying still and the hand on your belly going up and down. Of course, if you want the full Shavasana and extend the legs, by all means do so and bring the hands to the floor. Start to bring a little bit more life to ourselves. If you're in Shavasana, you can wiggle your fingers and toes and take a stretch and come into your fetal position and then coming up to sitting. If you're not, if you're similar to me, just cradle your thighs, bring your knees together, hug your knees in tightly, tell yourself something nice about yourself, a bit of gratitude. And then you can come into the fetal position if you want, but because I've got the rest of the day ahead, I want a little bit of energy. We're going to just keep the eyes closed and tuck the chin and rock forwards and backwards along the spine, giving yourself a bit of a spinal massage. Keep your eyes closed, rock forward and back four or five times before eventually coming and sitting in any comfortable cross-legged position. Eyes closed, hands into prayer position in front of the heart centre. Giving yourself a little bit of a thank you for practising today before raising your prayer towards your third eye and forehead where we ask for the wisdom to watch our thoughts. Lowering our prayer towards our mouth or our throat chakra we ask for the restraint to watch our words especially when dealing with other people but also to be mindful and compassionate of our own internal dialogue. And then finally, lowering our hands towards our heart centre, we ask that we have the strength and courage to do whatever is right and necessary, even when it's not the most preferred or desired path. Namaste.
Thank you so much for practicing along with me today for this uh, midday kind of unstress, de-stress flow to get you a little bit uh, more energized for the afternoon or for the day if you're doing this in the morning. Hopefully um, it's been good. Please do connect with me on social media. The Thought Gym is where you'll find me on all platforms there, including YouTube where there are a plethora of videos on mindset, resilience, health, well-being, energy, vitality, yoga, personal development, success principles, and more. Uh, and also remember to head to thethoughtgym.com because you can connect into the community further that way and get uh, access to some exclusive videos just for subscribers. So please do connect there and I will see you very, very soon. Until next time, namaste.